what's the latest on Belichick and Atlanta? What, what's Atlanta up to right now? I spent a lot of time working this over the weekend because we had our final NBC broadcast of the season. So I just wanted to know what is going on in Atlanta, particularly, and with Belichick generally. And obviously, getting someone from Belichick's side to talk is a challenge, to say the least. <laughs> I'm sure you'd be amazed to know it's a challenge to get anyone connected to Belichick to tell you anything. But from the Falcons' perspective, what I gathered is they still have plenty of work to do before they make a decision. They did work that they could do before the new rule that kicked in this year, Rich. You can't do in-person interviews with candidates under contract with other teams until the day after the divisional round. And the Falcons, as of Sunday, fully intended to start interviewing people in person who they weren't allowed to interview. Any coach under contract with another team, whether their team's alive or not, can't meet with them in person until the day after the divisional round, and they wanted to do that. The The idea that Belichick was a frontrunner, and there's plenty of people in league circles saying Belichick's a frontrunner, he's going to get that job. The Falcons bristle at that idea. And also, the other complicating factor in Atlanta is the presence of CEO Rich McKay. The coach and the GM report to Rich McKay. That's the structure in Atlanta. And from their perspective, they'd have no problem with Bill Belichick ending up in that hierarchy. Belichick mm. presumably will. Belichick won't want to report to Rich McKay. He'll want to report directly to the owner, just like he did in New England. So, you know, it's one of those things where the longer this takes, the weirder it seems. And <laughs> no one else has interviewed Belichick. This is the other thing that I picked up this weekend that I thought was significant. There are other teams thinking about, this was as of Sunday, other teams thinking about interviewing Belichick, but they hadn't done it yet. They hadn't made their consideration into an actual interview of Belichick. At least one of them was a team that had a vacancy over the weekend and still might. The other one, at least one, at least one doesn't have a vacancy mm. currently. So step one would be fire the coach you have before you begin the pursuit of Belichick. But there are teams interested. They just, there hasn't been the land rush for Belichick that, that many thought there would be because this guy's one of the great coaches of all time. Why wouldn't you want him? Why wouldn't you do everything you could to try to hire the guy or at least do your due diligence on possibly hiring the guy there's been something holding teams back. But the fact that, that teams that have a vacancy are still considering it, and then there's a team that you just said that doesn't have a vacancy that is considering it, or at least over the weekend was, and now it's the middle of the week, how long is this going to play out? You know, I mean, um, how, 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 how I, I guess I'm not used to this dragging deep into January, potentially the top of February. Um, with the senior bowl starting, I mean, the right. evaluations have to have to get going here. You know, yeah. Usually, the only time that this drags into February is when we know that one of the teams in the Super Bowl is going to be losing a coordinator to one of the teams looking for a head coach. That has held true pretty much every year, except the year that Josh McDaniels jilted the Colts and they had to start from scratch, and they ended up with Frank Reich. So, it should it should be done at least as it relates to Belichick. It should be done sooner rather than later. But you still got four teams left. And look, no matter how careful I am when I say this, mm -hmm. it gets Chiefs fans triggered. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether or not Andy Reid's going to retire. I do know there's reason for the Chiefs to believe that he could. And obviously, that's all, you know, he's 65 years old. But th th there's enough that I've heard from enough people that I trust completely over the past few weeks to make me think the Chiefs are at least thinking, what will we do if he does? And I don't know that Belichick would be a fit there, but there's only one Patrick Mahomes. And if I want to catch Brady and win a Super Bowl, huh. then wow. he, that he, you know, that he did after he left me, I'll partner up with the guy who's determined to catch Brady with seven total in a heartbeat. So is that what Belichick's waiting for? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the Chiefs would want him. I don't know if the players would want him. I think there's reason to believe that if Andy Reid retires, the players are going to do what the Raiders players did when they said, we want Antonio Pierce. The players are going to say, we want Eric Bieniemy. I think there's a chance that happens. So I don't know that Belichick could be sold in the building, but maybe that's what Belichick's waiting for. Maybe he has reason to wait for it. I don't know. I don't know. It's speculation in the, in the absence of, of information from Camp Belichick, 
we have to speculate or we say nothing. So that's just something that I continue to keep an eye on. And I'm not saying Andy Reid is going to retire. All I'm saying is there's reason to believe the Chiefs are preparing for the possibility that he mm. could. And we'll see. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.